Hello again everyone, I'm Don McDermott, Sailor and Boat Builder. This is the second episode in my series on building a clinker plank sailing dinghy. Now, in the last video, it was mainly the preliminary work of building a tent, building a workbench, and building this lofting floor. In this episode, I'm going to loft the boat, and then I'm going to actually start the process of building the boat, the backbone of it, which is the stem, keel, hog, apron, and transom. Now, lofting is pretty complex, and to fully explain it is really beyond the remit of a moderate-length YouTube video. With that said, after I finish this dinghy, I do have plans for a bigger project in the future, and for that I will actually go into complete detail and explain lofting, and that will probably take several episodes to do. But right now, we're just going to look at what lofting actually is and why we do it. Then I'm going to do the lofting process, and along the way I will show you some bits and pieces of how the actual process works. The more interesting part will be after the lofting is actually completed and you'll be able to see how we use the lofting to construct the backbone of the boat. So as I said, let's start with what lofting actually is. So lofting is drawing the boat out full size on a lofting floor in three different dimensions. So you have the body plan, the half breadth plan, and then the profile view. So first you have to draw out a grid and then you will plot points on that grid, and those points will be taken from the table of offsets, which will have been put together by the designer of the boat. You then, once you've plotted these points, will take a batten, and you will make the lines of the boat following these points. Now the key thing to remember when you're lofting is that you want all the lines to be completely fair. So if in making a fair line you have to miss out on one of the given points, that's alright. A fair line takes precedence over that. Where it starts to get a little bit tricky, though, is if, say, in the profile view, you miss a point in order to make the line fair, you then have to go back to the other two views of the boat and replot in that new point. And you might replot it in the body plan and then find that you've thrown that fair line out. So you then have to remake that line in the body plan including the new point, only now you've realized that it's going to make you miss a different point in the body plan. You then have to take that new point and transfer it back to the half-breadth plan and to the profile plan. And then you just keep going round and round and round in circles, trying to get it so that all the lines are fair and all the points match with each other in all the different views of the boat, until you either start crying and decide you'd rather take up basket weaving as a hobby, or, and this is the option I advise, you decide you've gotten as close to perfect as you possibly can, and then you just get on with actually building the boat. And speaking of getting on with things, I said I needed to start by drawing a grid, so I'm going to do that. The first thing I need in order to make the grid is a long straight line of about 15 feet. And in order to put that down on this lofting floor, I'm going to use a chalk line. So when I bought this chalk line, quite a few people complained that there were no instructions for use, so I thought I would just give you the instructions here. It's pretty simple. Take off the cap, pour the chalk in until it's about halfway full, put the cap back on, shake it, and then you start pulling out the chalk line just a little bit, wind it back in, pull it out again, getting increasingly longer each time. One little trick that I did find is that if you shake it, as I'm doing here, as you pull the line out, it works much better. Using the chalk line is even easier. Just marked on a point on one end of the loft floor, marked on a point on the other end, stretch it between them, lift it up, ping, there you go. You got a lovely blue line, perfectly straight, and then just take a straight edge, doesn't really matter how long it is, and just gradually go along that line, pencil it in, and then dust away the chalk. So you can see I've now used that line to draw the entire grid, and up at the top you can see that curved line, that is the shear line. That's the top line of the boat, and it is the first line that we draw. So the next line that we draw is the profile. Now the profile is the actual front of the boat, and you can see that I'm in the process of making it. It still needs to curve around more that way. A word on these battens. This is actually the second time that I've tried to draw the profile, because the first time the batten snapped. And that was because I had made it 8 mil thick and that was just a little bit too thick. So I've narrowed it down to 5 millimeters and that works fine. The batten hasn't snapped and that's all good. Now you may ask, how can I be so certain that this batten 
has not snapped while doing the profile when I obviously haven't finished the profile. Well, I'll tell you. See, if you're seeing this, it means that this particular bit of footage has made the final cut. And it's only going to make the final cut if this works. So, if as I'm finishing doing the profile, the baton does snap, then you won't be seeing this. So there I've got the profile line, I've also drawn the rabbit line, which is just to the left of it. And then the next line is sort of the opposite of the profile line, uh, which is the transom. Now being drawn in the profile view, it's pretty simple. I'm just marking this point uh, down at the bottom, and then it's just going to be a straight line going up to where it intersects with the shear line. Now you see all these lines here, you'll understand a little bit better what we're going to do with them when it comes time for me to actually make the station molds, but effectively this is the body plan and these lines are going to be used to make the templates for the station molds. Uh, this is another view of the boat, this is the half breadth plan, basically this is if, you, if you're standing in the boat looking down, and this is effectively what lines you're looking at, So two of the final things that you do in lofting are the stem development and the keel development. Now as you can see, the lines can be pretty complicated in both of these. So the important thing here is to draw as neatly as possible and to label all the lines clearly, otherwise when you actually start using them, you might get yourself a little bit confused. So that's it for the lofting for the time being. I realize, of course, that watching somebody draw pencil lines on sheets of plywood is not necessarily the most exhilarating of spectacles, but it is going to get a lot more exciting after this. In the next video, we're going to start using the lofting, and we're going to use it to make the station molds and start making the keel and the stem, etc., etc. And that's going to be very interesting to see how we're going to use the lofting to make those bits. And then, of course, it's going to be nice when they actually start going together, because finally the boat is going to start to look like a boat. So, I do hope that you subscribe so you can see that next video when it comes out, and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.